Take a moment and think about how you manage your money. That's exactly what we're gonna be looking at in today's video, 15 signs you're managing your money better than the average American. Now, when it comes to money management, it is built on the relationship that you have with money. For some of us, it comes from our parents, which could be either positive or negative, depending on the relationship that they had, but let's go ahead and break these down. Starting with our first one, budgeting carefully. Now, when it comes to budgeting, you can call it whatever you want, as long as you know the money that's going in, the money that's coming out, and then of course, what you have left over, but there is a lot of methodology behind it. There's a lot of different ways. So looking at a way and finding a way that works for you can really create a very easy budget. Now, when we think of budgeting the 50, 30, 20 rule, 50% is going to your fixed expenses, 30% is the variable, 20% which is left over goes towards your other um, your other categories, which of course could be saving, could be debt repayment, could be whatever it needs to be for that final 20%. A lot of people do the envelope budgeting method where you set aside so much money for each one. And unfortunately for a majority of us, people do the no budgeting method. That is right. When you look at the no budgeting method, this is taking the money you have, paying your bills and whatever seems to be left at the end of the month is exactly what you're left with for better or for worse, just like a marriage, depending on the relationship and how you manage your money is going to show you what you have in the future. The next one we look at is having an emergency fund and using it only for emergencies. Now this is very, very hard to do for a majority of people. When we think of the emergency fund, we are talking three to six months of savings and using it for an emergency. This is not the justification of taking a vacation, you know, doing something out of the ordinary, what is truly and what can be categorized as an emergency. When you think of an emergency, you're looking at job loss, you're looking at medical expenses, home and auto repairs, something that is not in the budget, something that is kind of out of the norm, or is it something that you needed to be budgeting for? This again could include if you have an older vehicle, you know you're gonna have to replace it, let's put some money in the budget, that way you can have it and really be able to cover the expense. Same with home repairs, when you think of a home and you look at a roof, you look at windows, you look at things that are going to need maintenance, are gonna need replacement, budgeting that, putting that into a budget does make a big difference. Now when it does come to money management, paying your bills on time, this is huge. When you're paying your bills on time, you're avoiding your late payments, you're avoiding dings possibly affecting your credit, you're avoiding paying interest. There are a lot of things in keeping your credit score in good shape can be a game changer for the rest of your life. It seems like common sense, but people fall behind with bills. This is the reason why I recommend, and I have ever since the beginning, automating your bills, making sure that your credit card bills, your auto loan bills, your mortgage bills, everything is paid on time every single month, that you're not falling behind on those bills, and you are getting those paid on time. And of course, with the on-time bill payment, not having high interest debt, this is one that I know a majority of you guys cannot really attest to. When we think of high interest debt, we are thinking of credit cards. Credit cards are and can be very, very detrimental when it comes to managing your money, when it comes to a relationship. And again, a lot of this does come from your parents, comes from other sources, where if people say that credit cards are bad, not really, credit cards can build credit, credit cards used properly can really be a tool and that is all it is. Majority of people, however, use credit card and use high interest debt as a crutch or use it as something as a supplement to their own income, meaning when they become reliant on them, it becomes part of the debt and honestly, to get out of credit card debt when you start getting to a higher balance, I'm talking when you get 10, 15, 20,000 dollars, getting out of credit card debt can be incredibly difficult to do. The next one we look at is the 401k. You are making contributions to the 401k. Now, surprising enough, we have about 20% of Americans that are offered 401k plans. They put in zero. There is nothing going in those 401k plans. And a lot of the companies where we are not seeing contributions do offer a company match or something that is going to amplify or really slingshot, really build up that savings account or that investment account, retirement account, much, much faster with the match that we have in there. So making sure you are contributing at the very bare minimum. And I would even say this before you get to that emergency fund, before you get into that debt repayment, really getting to the point of putting away some money in a 401k plan, because for most people, they're never gonna get there or they're never gonna start. It's gonna be the perpetual debt for their entire life. Now looking at our next one, living below your means. This is something that I feel like a ton of people have forgotten. This is spending more money than you make. Common sense, 
When you have $5,000, if you spend $4,500, guess what? You got $500 left at the end of the month. The problem is with a lot of people, they might make $5,000, they're spending $6,000. That negative thousand is coming in the form of credit card debt because of course they are not managing their money properly and they don't really budget for it. If you know where you're at financially, it is a game changer. When you start doing a budgeting, when you start doing your spending plan, it is a game changer for the rest of your life because you know without a doubt exactly where you are. If you're managing from month to month, if you're managing week to week, if you know you're not gonna have enough to pay those bills, a lot of people will go out, make some extra money, work some extra hours, get a side hustle. There's a lot of things that you can do to go ahead and increase income to make sure you're covering those bills. And of course, when we talk about paying your bills on time, your credit score. Now, any credit score over a 720 is considered good credit. Anything above a 714, you are on the good side or the average credit score of Americans fall at a 714. So they're running about the A credit range. If your credit is below that, definitely some room for improvement. If your credit score is higher than that, congratulations, you are doing better than the average of what we see with managing money. And of course, with the manage money, um, manage, managing money aspect, it is about not only being on time with those bills, but also keeping the balance of those credit cards a little bit lower. Now, when we get into our next one, this is a big one, and this is a question that I always ask. But before we get into it, guys, consider subscribing to the channel, and let's get into this one. It is a plan to pay off debt. Whether you're using the snowball method, you're using the debt avalanche method, having a method and having an idea how you're gonna pay off debt when I ask people this question, it is met with usually a big question mark. They have no idea how they're gonna pay it back. They have no idea when they're gonna pay it back. They have no intention for some people to pay it back at all. Having a plan in place, knowing exactly how you're gonna do it, how long it's gonna take you, how much money you gotta put towards it to get it gone in X amount of months or years will be a game changer and it will also be a driving force that can keep you accountable to where you are for that debt repayment. And of course, saving for big purchases. This is another thing I believe that years ago, people don't do. When you think of saving for a home, saving for a car, saving for a college fund, saving for renovation, saving for vacation, most people don't save for anything anymore. It is about the instant gratification, meaning that I can go out, I can buy a house, I can do it zero down, I can borrow money for my 401k, 100% financing on cars, student loans, gonna take them out forever. People have been doing it for you know, 10, 20, 30 years we've seen student loans. And of course, being able to borrow money for weddings, for vacation, spending the next three to five years to repay it. So not only do you, let's say, spend $10,000 for a wedding, which is super, super cheap, then you spend the next five years paying for it, meaning your $10,000 wedding now ran $15,000 because you paid the interest over five years. And again, you're stuck with that payment for an extended amount of time. Now, when we think about finances and managing your money, tracking your expenses, this is something that is very important to the budgeting process, very important to the financial aspect, the financial planning aspect. You have to know where your budget is and you have to know where you're spending your money. This gives you the tool and gives you the ability to cut when needed and where needed. Um, looking at subscription services, looking at a lot of things that people sign up for that they don't utilize or don't utilize in the entirety, get them out. Get rid of them, get them out of the budget, guys, because it will be very, very important when you start repaying that debt to have the money there. And of course, when we talk about the budgeting and when we talk about that, um, that emergency fund, looking at unexpected expenses, there's got to be a plan. There's got to be something in place where if the emergency fund doesn't cover it, if it is something that is above and beyond what you normally have, if it's job loss, what does it look like? What is the plan? Not really having the financial plan, the money set aside like we have an emergency fund, but what is the plan if X, Y, Z happens? What is your course of action and how are you gonna handle it? And of course, when we think about managing money, it is a side hustle. We see everything under the sun from social media, from food, grocery delivery, babysitting, pet sitting, freelancing. There are so many things you can do to have a side hustle. It is even recommended um, for a lot of people that 54% of Americans do currently have a side hustle, which is kind of crazy to think that they have not only their primary job, but enable to um, really for myself save through YouTube, through what I love doing here on social media. It is very, very cool to have a side hustle that is invested. And if you caught some of the videos, we are investing all of the money that we get from the side hustle. But when it comes to, again, managing money and having that relationship, prioritizing financial goals. When we think about goal planning, a lot of people will set goals for themselves. 
When it comes to the financial goal planning, most people will forget this in their entirety. There will be absolutely no plan. When I talk about like a three-year, a five-year plan, or even longer, there is nothing in the woodworks. There's nothing in the market. There's nothing written down, which is kind of crazy. Now, again, when you think about your relationship, paying off credit cards in full, this is gonna do two things for you. Number one, if you pay your credit card off in full, you're not gonna pay interest. You don't wanna pay interest if you have credit cards, if you have reward cards, if you have cards that have a high interest rate, chances are if you're not paying them off in full, you are paying more in interest than the rewards programs that you're signed up for that these cards offer. That is the catch 22, that is how they get there. In addition to not only not paying interest on that card, if it's paid off in its entirety, you are helping your credit score, you are keeping your capacity at 100% because you are not carrying debt. And the final one that we see on here is spending responsible, not going out and keeping up with the Joneses, not falling to the lifestyle creep, not really staying up with everyone else, looking at the fancy shoes, the new technology, what everyone is into, lavish experiences, but a lot of people, if you really plan a lot of things, you can find cheaper than you normally would, which is very interesting to see when you start discount shopping, when you start bulk shopping, when you get out of high interest credit card debt, it really gives you the ability to take care of your finances and manage the money that you want. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for today's video. Managing our money, definitely better than the average American if you are doing some or all of these things. Let me know in the comment and I'll catch you in the next video.